Thanks for your support as a channel member, Marius Hegley. Hello folks and welcome back to another Football Manager 2020 video here on the channel. This is, as all of these pre-release ones are going to be, this is one that was recorded when I was down at Sports Interactive Head Office in London with early access to a pre-release copy of the game. So you'll get used to this disclaimer, but please be aware... All this footage is captured on a pre-release version of the game. It's all subject to change before the main game, etc., etc., etc. So, yeah, that, that that's the disclaimer out of the way. We are going to be looking at some very cool stuff in this video. Bear with me. I have notes. We're going to take a closer look at the development centre. We're going to be looking at transfers and transfer negotiations. We're going to be having a look at how backroom staff work differently in the new version of the game. And we are going to be playing our first competitive game in FM20 as the League One season kicks off for Posh. So if you're excited for all of that stuff, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn your notifications on. I do daily Football Manager videos here on the channel. Over 450 videos made on FM19 and I imagine there'll be a similar sort of number done on FM20. So uh, yeah, come in, make yourself comfortable. It's all good. And if you've not pre-ordered the game yet, I've got a link down in the description where you can get it for just £29 and 69 through two game using discount code Lelujo. It gets you a much better price than you pay on Steam. It pays me a small commission as well. Um, so it's win-win for everybody. You get the game cheaper. I get paid a little kickback and everybody's happy. So um, if you haven't yet pre-ordered and this video is the thing that tips you over the edge and convinces you to do so, the link is down in the description. And just before we get started, one final reminder. This was obviously recorded in a big room full of other Football Manager content creators. Um, so it is a little bit noisy. Feel free to use the comment section down below to let me know any of my fellow creators who you either see or hear during this video um there's one of them even makes a small cameo voice voice only cameo today but who was it let me know down in the comments over to you pass kev let's have a look at this uh let's have a look at this development center shall we right we have the development center induction to have a little nose around so this is another one of the new parts and i very much want to be inducted into it to figure out how it's going to work so i have to respond apparently I must respond where do i respond do i go into the development center i do so development center induction develop good youth development is key to make sure you have the best talent available to you and if you remember back to when we were doing the whole club setup stuff it's one of the club priorities as well is that we develop club but develop players for our own youth system so it's important on that side of things as well. So the development centre gives you a complete overview of all players out on loan and in your youth teams. So we currently have four players out on loan, um, an average under 23 squad and a below average under 18 squad. That all sounds about right. Let's do the induction to figure out how it's actually going to work. So this is your at a glance look at everything to do with player development at the club. It's broken down into key areas to give you the information uh, when you need it. The information you need when you need it. There we go. So, um, no players worth noting. Perhaps I should have done a different club so that we could have some stuff show up in here. So, we've got no first team candidates. Nobody you need attention. We do have some ones to watch. So, Harrison Burroughs should be moved to Peterborough and would contribute effectively. So, actually, I would argue that makes him a first team candidate, doesn't it? Unless I don't understand what each of them is. So, um, this section is a breakdown of players out on loan and the strength of the youth teams, yeah, that, that's all fairly self-explanatory. And these are the best young players right now, the closest to the first team, and the ones you should play, pay close attention to, so we don't have any here. Um, and then um, we also focus on individual pro progress, with staff offering advice on players you might need developing, as well as they, as they need to, as well as those who are on the right path and worth keeping an eye on. So these are the ones who aren't developing, none. These are the ones who are on the right path. Excellent. It's good enough to be moved to the Peter squad, but needs under 23 to playing time too. Fair enough. Um, our section for the under 23 shows you exactly what's going on at that level on both a team and an individual basis. If you want to get involved, you can influence the tactics they use, move players from squad to squad, adjust training and delegate responsibilities accordingly. So our average under 23 squad, there's one or two players who are close to being ready for first team opportunities. A couple of players have great potential and there's a decent development squad. So can we click on that? Probably not in the induction. Ahead of match day and on the day of the game itself, it can play an active role in team selection too. Mark Tyler is flexible. 
so he's, I guess, looking after the youth. Mark Tyler is flexible to incorporate any players you want to see play, as well as adjusting to any tactical demands you might have. So he's the one managing the under-23 team. The same applies to the under-18 squad. Use the different options in the menu to get involved with the development of players in the younger age group. You'll also be able to use to find full fixture lists and tactical analysis of team performance is here. Throughout the season, you'll also find little nuggets of information in here that will help you identify the next player to come through the ranks. Check in regularly to see what the staff at the club have to say and you'll be better informed for doing so. When we have players out on loan, the backroom team help look after them and oversee their progress to make sure they're getting as much out of the loans as we need to. So these are the players we've got out on loan um, and then it, so it gives us our loan report um, but then tells us what the agreed playing time is and how much they're playing. That's presumably whether they're happy with the loan, what their current morale is, you'd get their form down there as well and the option to recall them from loan on there as well. Um, this is where you'll find a list of players out on loan at any given time. We track the length of their stay as well as a number of statistics. So this is the stuff that used to come through as loan reports. It's now all within this development centre which is handy to have it all in the same place. Um, we want to make sure our young players are being suitably challenged and if there are certain individuals who could benefit from a loan move um, staff make appropriate recommendations. So if we've got someone at the club like how we saw Idris Kanu on that screen before who it said is ready to be moved into the Peterborough squad but still needs under 23's time, that could potentially develop into something along the lines of he's really ready for first team football now but you can't fit him into your squad and then presumably he would show up on this loan suggestions section at the bottom of the screen at that point telling us to send him out on loan so he can get some game time for whatever reason, which is splendid. Um, your backroom team are available to handle any of these tasks and to delegate the particular responsibilities. Assuming control of these responsibilities yourself will result in great of visibility of youth squads in your day-to-day -day managerial tasks. That's interesting. So if I delegate it, it kind of all happens in the background and I don't necessarily even hear about it as much. Whereas if I'm if I don't delegate it, then it's gonna be coming up more in the actual playing of the game. So if you want to be able to keep a tight track on who your youngsters are, you probably wouldn't delegate it in the first place. But that's literally telling you don't. Um, because if you delegate, it keeps them slightly out of immediate sight. It says it right there in the induction. That concludes our development centre session. That is, that's going to be pretty interesting. So we can dig down into each in there. So that was the overview. There's the loan section. This is the under 23s. So we can now see a breakdown of each player. So, and um, we already talked about Idris Kanu, so let's look at him, a 19 year old young striker. Um, and there's the development advice for him. And each one of these players has their own individual little piece of advice. So this is, some of this is stuff that probably would have come off of the coach report screen previously. And I imagine it's probably still there. If we have a look at his coach report, presumably it's still on here somewhere. It's not actually. So that specific development stuff has moved on. Um, but it tells us, for example, Ricky Jade Jones could become a star player and potentially slightly better than George Boyd, which is high praise indeed for any footballer. Um, similar screen for the under 18s. And you can go into more depth on here as well. So previously, where we had the under 23s and the under 18 squads listed separately down this side of the screen, it now all lives within the development centre. Um, so from in there, you can have a look at their squad, um, their dynamics as a squad, tactics, training, fixtures, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of put it all in one place. And as it said in the induction, because it's all in that one place, if you do decide to delegate that and you don't ever click on that tab, you could effectively just pretend it's not happening and let it kind of take care of itself and occasionally have someone pop up ready for your first team squad. Whereas if you want to be really hands on in it, you'll be spending a lot of time in this development centre. So that, that is cool. Right, in the interest of seeing what player negotiations are like, I've set my director of football to go and find me a player. He's found me Tom Anderson of Doncaster, who's a centre-back. It is an area of the squad that probably does need strengthening. If we have a look at the squad depth, um, there's not huge depth at centre-back. I brought in this fella, uh, Eunice Kabul, on a trial as well, but really, I'm more likely to go with a guy who's not going to cost me an absolute fortune. Um, but with 
player negotiations, you then have the option to hand over to the director of football or get involved in negoti negotiations themselves. And I definitely want to get involved in this because this is one of the things that is shiny and new. And this straight away looks like a completely different screen and it's absolutely overflowing with information. So we've got his agent up here um, having is giving it all that doing his agenty things um, we can see the player is interested in negotiating um, this shows how many players we've currently got at the different playing time levels um, so we've got no star players two important nine regular starters nine fringe players in our squad at the moment we can see that this guy we've got his scout report on here so we can see his pros and cons straight away and um, he's Got his scouting rating of 79, current ability of three, three and a half stars, um, potential ability of up to four and a half stars, and then we can uh, we can sort out his contract from here. So, uh, if we've got, if we put him in as a fringe player, which is what's recommended. So these are where we get some of these different names for things. So key player is now star player. Um, I think important player was that previously first team player or something like that, um, and then we've got. Um, the various different things in here, but this is where I think you have the option, yeah, to add in um, promises for next year. So we can bring him in on the basis of right, he's three and a half star, but with four and a half star potential. So he can come in now as a fringe player, um, but next year we're going to have him as a regular starter. For example, if that's the plan that we've got for him, um, I'm kind of keen to negotiate it without necessarily having a plan for next year which he's happy with as well. But if you've got a player who maybe is a little bit younger, bit higher reputation, um, got even greater potential, that's when you might have to add those little bits in. So I quite, I, I like the fact that it's in, the, get in there. Um, oh, and we've got, a, we've got a, an induction. How did this happen? If you, want to, if you want to come to an agreement on a contract, there has to be an element of give and take. So that's just telling. Right, this is everything I've just explained, I think. Um, but it's now giving us an induction, which is, I mean, I'm not going to argue with having an induction. A lot of that stuff is all the same. It's showing us our budget stuff in there as well. Um, now you're familiar with the process of offering a player a contract, please let me know if you would like to be responsible for this going forward. Yeah, I want to do it. Player contracts looks awesome. What is happening here? This is all... Was That, pre that previous thing was just the promises, wasn't it? We didn't actually start talking about money. So now we're talking about money. Okay, so it's now a two-year contract. I mean, it's it's the same script. Yeah, so this was the promises screen we had before, which we've now set in stone. There are promises that we've made, and these are our actual contract terms, which um, current offer, let's go back to that. I mean, just for the purposes of getting a player in, we'll do that. But that is the changes to player promises, contract negotiations, all that kind of stuff. Well, I've had a few technical difficulties there and we've actually played the first game of the season, but stupid old OBS didn't record it properly. Um, I could, if you want it as bonus content, show you eight minutes of me talking about it with nothing on screen, but I assume you probably didn't want that included in the video. I have the face cam though, it's there if anybody wants it. Um, but just as a quick recap of what's happened, um, we have done a couple more transfers. I've left all this in the hands of my director of football. So he did bring in Tom Anderson, who we looked at before. Um, he's also brought a striker who is a target man, so doesn't fit into our system. He's 28 years old, so no room for potential. And he doesn't score goals. So it's exact, he was the missing piece to the puzzle. He's come in. Um, more excitingly, though, we've brought in this guy, Tudor Baluta, who's come in on loan from Brighton until, the end of, until January, in fact, not the end of the season. I thought it was the end of the season, but he's a defensive midfielder. He also plays central midfield, centre-back. Four-star current ability, though, with five-star potential ability, makes him comfortably the best defensive midfielder of the squad. And it is perfect timing, because Lewis Reed, who plays there for us at the moment, has just picked up an injury. So he is the only change from our first game of the season. I'll show you the goal because it was an absolute beauty from George Boyd. Um, so we'll just have a quick look at the goal that we scored in that first match. Um, it's just loading that back up for us. But we did beat Fleetwood 1-0 on the first day of the season. It kind of scuppers my plan to show you every match. In fact, I wasn't able to show you this one, but there'll still be plenty more matches for you. Look at that for a goal. George Boyd doing 
George Boyd things, winning us the first game of the season. But now we are away from home against Oxford, and this is our 11. Still using the uh, Diamond Gagan press that we worked on before. I've tweaked a couple of the, uh, the res staff responsibilities. I actually had it set up on this screen so that all 99 tasks, that's right, there are 99 tasks, all of them was delegated to other members of staff just because I wanted to get through the save quickly to show you as much as possible while I'm down here in London. Um, but what it meant was I couldn't actually do my own team talks and couldn't do any touchline shouts. So I've turned those two back on for now. I might end up tweaking some of the others as time goes on just to show you more of that stuff. But for now, I just wanted to get as, mu get as many matches recorded as I could to show you how the match engine looks different from what it did um, on FM19. So this is the team for the first game of the season that you're going to get to see um, we're away against Oxford, we've got Pim in goal, a back four of Butler, Knight, Kent and Thompson with Baluta, new boy Baluta at the base of the midfield that has Boyd and Woodyard in it, Madison then in behind Tony and Isa you can see as well we've promoted youngster Harrison Burrows from the under 23s, he's only 17 but has four and a half star potential if we go on to our development centre um, he's not showing as a first team candidate, he never did, he was always showing as a one to watch but he is our highest potential youngster and I'm going to try and use him a lot just to see what impact that has on the development centre just to see if it does anything. So if we submit that team, squad, oh we've got to give a squad number to Baluta Number 13, excellent stuff. Let's get into the game then. And fingers crossed this time I'm actually going to get to give my own team talk. I can, there you go. Um, so, I'm expecting you to win today, boys. See, that was worth me finding a way to do that myself. That's the sort of team talk Gavin Strachan couldn't have given on his own. He's not inspirational enough to be able to give a team talk like that one I just gave. Isa now is in behind early on shoots and it is saved and deflected away for a corner by the Oxford keeper and the highlight continues it's going to be a super duper corner and um, Madison with the corner in fact and Kent heads just over from the corner that we just won and that was a, a high pace start to the game and in fact we've got a free kick just on the edge of the area here and if Marcus Madison is reflected correctly in game he's going to score it and it bends massively but it is saved pushed out of the top corner um, by the Oxford keeper. I'm excited to see that we've still got picnic benches and umbrellas in the corners of the match near the burger vans. That's something that I would have hated to, to see being taken away from the game. Um, you can hear all these monsters in the background. They're, it's they it's got, disgraceful they stuff. I haven't seen any big circular balls yet, but I will keep my eye out for them. I always felt that was more of a non-league thing anyway. But um, yeah, they've got the picnic tables and the umbrellas. So. Have you ever seen a picnic table with an umbrella in it, a real football match? I don't know that I have, but clearly whoever designs this stuff for a football manager at the local ground that he goes to, that's what they have in the corners, which is why every, every team that doesn't have stuff in the corners in game has them, and I love them. Um, right, Boyd. Now trying to get a move going from the midfield. Woodyard plays it out to Butler. He's in a crossing position. Cross comes over. Iser is there. Falls to Tony who hits the post. And then everything just kind of stopped. And Marcus Madison who started that move off arrives to tuck it away. We want to have a look at this from the other angle. And just try and work out what's happened here. This was a bit odd. So Woodyard played it out to Butler. Butler with the cross. So it's Iser with the first effort. Then Tony. And then, I mean, it, in my mind time slowed down a lot more than it did there because the ball was kind of in just bobbling around in the middle of the area but in actual fact watching the replay um, it wasn't the case at all Madison was kind of straight on it and it looked a better goal from the from the reverse angle than it did from the one we originally saw the important thing of course is that we are one nil up and now night that is absolutely terrible and we've left Oxford in here with two men over um, and Woodyard comes back with an absolutely fantastic tackle Really surprised to see how few cars there are in the car park on a match day. They've obviously put the prices up, um, or public transport links are better than they are in real life because there is literally just an ambulance out there, no cars at all. Um, Hansen now charging down the right hand side for Oxford, but we get the tackle in. 
and uh, the the move breaks down. Right, let's um, let's have a look at a shout. I think it's probably time to do a shout. I one nil up with five minutes to go in the half. I don't know what shout I do in these circumstances, so we'll leave that well alone and focus on the highlight that's going on on the screen. Another thing we need to do is get our match stats and things showing up on the screen. But in the meantime, Ivan Tony is in behind, shoots from range, and it is just over right have we got i think the next time we get a highlight we need to we need to get all our stuff on the screen so that i can see what's going on right half time team talk things are going well let's guard against complacency and get the second half up and running and as soon as we get this first highlight i'm gonna nose around and here we go right before that gets going so how do you do it you go in there don't you is that a new one? Okay, so we can pick the split brief. Oh, that was always there, but I didn't think it existed in that menu previously. So we want match information. Um, do Oxford normally get 9,000 fans? That seems like a lot for Oxford. But what do I know? Um, what else do we have? Match stats. See, I set this up at the start of the year and then never look at it again. What else do we normally have? A league table. Is that everything? I feel like there's still stuff missing from this screen, but I could not tell you what that stuff is right now. So let's get some match stats over here. Do I normally have the opposition formation as well? That feels like the sort of thing that I would put there, but I don't know if I have. It, it's probably the case that I haven't done it at any point in FM19, and now I've remembered I used to do it previously, but let's get it on there. Um, if we can get a hold of that. Can we get a hold of that? It's kind of, they've kind of appeared on top of each other. There we go. So we can put that under there. And fingers crossed, they still disappear when the play goes under them, um, the way they did on FM19. But we've got a throw here, and it's Baluta trying to play. In fact, I thought he was playing the right back in, but in fact, it's a lovely ball over the top for Isa, who is in here and fires wide. And we can see the league table does fade out to let the ball go past, so it doesn't interfere with us being able to enjoy the match, which is splendid. I'm starting to think in terms of my own substitutions. We have got some attacking options down on the bench, um, just not really much that fits in with our system. I speculated in the match that wasn't, the one that you've not been able to see. Um, that we probably do need to get a second tactic set up that suits some of these impact players that we've got on the bench. The bench, the like of Siriki Dembele, uh, Burrows, Tazdemir, none of these players really fit in to this diamond system. So I think we probably need to set something up to allow us to bring them on and change matches. Uh, but at the moment, what I really want, what I want more than anything, is a central midfielder. Um, but such a thing apparently does not exist on our bench. So what we're actually going to do is have a look at the 25 goals in his life new striker that we brought in. Um, he is a target man, so I mean, let's make him one. I've not used a target man in FM for at least two years, so it might be that they're remarkable these days, but I, I don't know a lot about tactics. If you're new to the channel, it's important that you know that. I don't know a lot about tactics. Um, but I do feel that perhaps Target Man and Gagan Press don't mesh together perfectly. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll learn together. We'll figure it out as we go along. Let's get into the last 20 minutes of the game. We brought Mason on in central midfield as well. He's a right back, really, but he's a bit of a utility man as well. So we've got the option to just put him on and play him wherever he might need to play. And I really want to get the youngster on Burrows. I know Madison's been one of our better players, but one of my priorities, if I get the opportunity to have enough time to do it, is to play Harrison Burrows as much as I can as our best young player and just try and see what kind of impact it has in that development centre. So we're going to get him on as often as the opportunity is. Yeah, the only, the only problem with that is that our best player is Marcus Madison, who plays in exactly the same position. So every time I do it, I'm going to be weakening the team to do it. And we've just given away a penalty and yeah, we're throwing it away, aren't we? Everything was going so well and now we're throwing it away and it is one all with seven minutes remaining thanks to a, it was a sloppy penalty to give away and it was it wasn't even the best penalty in the world but look at it from the other angle it's straight down the middle the keeper actually dives past it and uh yeah 
Never mind, eh? What what can we do? I mean, they're all uninterested. What can we possibly do to try? Let's. I was going to show some passion, but the game ended. I speculated. I, I waited too long, and uh, yeah, that wasn't really the result that we were looking for. Um, but we can uh, we can make it all better against Cheltenham in the Carabao Cup, which we're going to win six or seven nil would be my early prediction and you can find out how accurate my predicting is in tomorrow's video back here at 4 p.m if you have enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me for loads more fm20 content over the coming weeks and months please make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on if you haven't yet pre-ordered and um, my link to pre-order for a super discounted price is down in the description below as i mentioned at the start of the video Thank you very much for watching.